it's this face again. Hope you're all are doing well. I'm just going to do another really quick, no prompt, no objective review on Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, the movie, not the show. Maybe one day I'll go into the show, uh, but you should watch the show, especially if you plan on seeing the movie. I saw it, I think last week and, or maybe the week before, but I adored it. I thought it was amazing. I really liked being able to see Rika, and I'm playing you on his name, Mr. Cutie Boy with the sword. He was only ever mentioned briefly in the show during the Kyoto Tokyo school, like, competition arc. And I was excited to see him develop here because I had no idea what he, his whole thing was about. I haven't read the manga, but I, he was so endearing. He's very much like Yuji, and I hope him and Yuji become good friends because they sort of have like the same exact story but they're both like unconventional sorcerers so it'd be nice in season two if they got to like hang out and i'm also curious to see how i'm i'm terrible what the hell is his name i should know this i'm wearing the shirt i mean he's not on it it's yuji yuji nabara megami and gojo sama i love gojo so i i enjoyed him in this movie obviously i thought i wasn't gonna need to edit this video i'm going to have to edit this movie this video hey 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 What's his name? Oh, I just saw it. I just saw it. Yuta. It's like Yuji, but different. So that's why I was like, it's not Yojo. <laughs> that's silly. But yeah, Yuta. I really found him very endearing. And his whole story is pretty much just tragic. I don't know why he was sick and why he was at the hospital. Obviously, that's a bummer. Um, but he got to meet Rika there. And God, their whole just romance. It was so, there was so much build up to it. And then it got pretty much like ripped away from them just as it like kind of started or got more concrete because they already had like memories together and they grew up. But God, uh, hearing about that story and about how Yuta was technically the one who like cursed her, tragic, very upsetting. Um, but I really liked seeing Yuta sort of like grow into being a sorcerer. I loved his chemistry with Toge, Panda, and Maki. Uh, I also kind of ship Yuta and Maki, so Rika is like, don't worry about coming to visit me anytime soon in heaven because, you know, go live your life. So, you know, if Yuta and Maki get to have a life here and then he can go see Yuta, that'd be great. Best of both worlds. Um, but Rika is just very sweet. That whole part where, like, she says goodbye to him actually got me to cry. I did not expect to cry in this movie, but I did. And it was because of Rika just being like, I forgive you. I'm not mad at you. I love you. And... I know you never meant to harm me and the time I had with you even as a curse was tremendous and I still love you and I will continue to love you and I'll see you up there but you know there's no need to join me so soon go and live a life and ugh, just it really got to me it just hurt my heart so much it was just so sweet and I didn't expect it to hit me that hard but it did um the choreography the scenes between, um, oh god, <laughs> what's his name? Gojo Ma? Ghetto? Is his name Ghetto? The guy with the earrings? There was a lot of fans of him in the audience. There was a couple girls in front of me. We had quite a young audience and almost a full audience at my theater that I went to, which I found surprising, but I went on the day of release. And they got really excited when he came on screen and I was like, I don't really get the hype of him. He's kind of a psycho. But every time Gojo was on the scene, I was like drooling, so it's fine. <laughs> But I really enjoyed this movie. I, I kind of wish, I knew that like we weren't going to see Yuji, um, Nobara, and Megami. We weren't going to see our new trio. But I was kind of hoping we'd see like a, like a little snippet of them. Cause especially because Megami, Megami seems to be someone from like one of like, like the big descending families from what I understand. So it seems like he should have already like been there. Or at least we should have gotten like a mention of him. I don't know. I don't know how it works. But apparently Yuta and Gojo, speaking of families, are like related. I think that's what he said. And what was great about the movie was that I have seen animated movies, especially anime movies, not just animated movies, in theaters. And they've all been dubbed. Like I saw the My Hero 3rd movie dubbed. I saw Demon Slayer, Mugen Train dubbed. And I was disappointed in the dub because I only watch it in subbed. So me and my boyfriend and then someone else in the audience, when they started speaking in Japanese and there were subtitles, we were all just like, yes. <laughs> we were all just like relieved. I don't even know if there is a dub 
for Jujutsu Kaisen in uh, American English. But I have really enjoyed the performances in Japanese. And there's just some things in Japanese, like, dialect, or not dialect, like, language. and Or maybe just the way, like, people in anime talk. That doesn't translate well to English. Like, there was a scene in Demon Slayer when the movie, when they're on the train, and when Goku, bless his heart, I love him so much, uh, is, like, eating and he's, like, tasty! Tasty! And, like, I don't know, it just, that sounds better and less dumb in Japanese than it does in English. So I was really excited for the sub. And also I just really love Gojo's um, voice actor, so he can just talk for as long as he wants. You know, I'm a big simp. Uh, I have another shirt that just has him on it, and it's, like, him in, like, a flowery scene where, where he's like, ha ha ha, I'm gonna murder you. <laughs> and uh, I love that shirt, it's very funny. But this one's softer, and this one has... My, my my family on it. I love them. They're very sweet. But um, I really liked seeing Maki sort of let down her walls. I really liked learning a little bit more about Toge. Because, you know, you could always pick up on, like, some things that he tr that he says that translate to, like, actual phrases. So I think, like, salmon is, like, okay or yes. And then Benito Flakes. I don't know what that is. But then he, like, says other things that are, like, no. Uh, or maybe, like, Suna. Or, like, tuna is yes and then salmon's like okay and then there's like some other phrasings uh that i can like sort of catch on to but i got i really liked seeing it explored with yuta who was like just as new to this uh curse that he uses so that was really cool um i also love panda panda's a great boy we love we stand panda and i really enjoyed just seeing gojo pop off like when the what is it? It's like the thousand day war. It's not that, but it's like the thousand demon war that Ghetto sets up. Is that his name? I think that's his name. And just to see him like go off on that, on that black character who had like the whip that was like really woven. He was, and just like, he was just brutal. He would just not mess around. But I'm hoping... With some of these characters that were featured on, like, Ghetto's team, part of, like, his, like, his own little, like, cursed society that he's forming, his own, like, school teaching, I, I want to learn more about them, because there was the girl with the phone, and the girl who was, like, hanging toys, and then hanging people in return, and then the guy with the whip, I just wanted to learn more about them, and I hope we get to see them again. Um, I hope they weren't just, like, movie exclusive, and maybe this is, like, oh, this is, like, you getting to know them now. But then we'll see them in season two. I would hope, please. Because, I don't know. I just, they kind of were thrown in. And I know they're, they have like this small snippet of when the two girls are like in a prison. Looking like they were being abused or sold or whatever. Like, they weren't tr being treated well. I don't know what was going on. I don't know if it was like human trafficking or just some horrible ring of bad people wanting to do bad things to children. But, um... They seemed so loyal to Ghetto, and I want to know, like, why, and if he knew he, they had curse magic, or if, or curse manipulation. I don't know if I should say, like, curse magic, because I still don't understand all the rules of curses, but, like, I know it's not just, like, straight up magic, and, like, some people are born with it, I think, or they experience something so traumatic that they have it. I'm still... I don't know. There's not really, like, a deep dive, even on, like, fandom.com, about, like, the curses. Or at least something, not something that I have, like, comprehensively, like, absorbed and understood. So, take that as you will. Maybe I'm just dumb dumb. But, and then I got to see Nanami, who's also, I love him. I need him on a shirt as well. Um, I got these on Etsy, by the way, so, shout out to the original artist. Uh, slash distributor. But Nanami got to pop off too. We got to see his sort of like protege with like the beanie and he puts it over his face. Um, I'd like to learn more about him. He was also featured in the anime very briefly when um, they were fighting the guy with the, um, who's like the transmutation guy who would like take apart people and poor Junpei. He was such a good boy. I was really bummed about him. Sorry, this is also just sort of like an anime review, I guess, in general. Or just snippets, so spoilers for the anime. 
I mean, I, I think that's obvious because I'm talking about the movie, but you know, this isn't that turning out how I wanted, but, um, I really enjoyed the movie. I really would like you guys to go see it. I think it's just like, though I will say the only problem I had with the movie is that things were going by too quickly. I would have liked to have like sat more in some scenes. Like I would have seen, I would have liked to have seen more progress with you to learning how to be at the school and using curse energy because they sort of just like skip to three months ahead and he's like a pretty good swordsman fighting Maki and I'm like this feels slightly unearned because I didn't see it but I'm happy that you're not crying and sad so I'm okay because his whole backstory of like Rika just like wreaking havoc on people that bully Yuta or look him the wrong way like we saw like one instance where like she almost killed three bullies at school and yes what they were doing was wrong don't fucking bully people i can't believe we're in 2022 still having to say that but you know did they deserve to almost die and be completely mangled for the rest of their life